Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Well, this video may be for you if you've got a Vos 300 Rally and you're interested in fitting the uh, power flow and the uh, foam air filter that goes with it. And uh, I'll uh, be covering how I fitted it, any problems I had, and then uh, what I felt about it once it was uh, all installed. So I hope you find this uh, of use to you. So let's see what you get in the kit, which came from JR Endurance. Uh, I've opened this already and then transported it again, so it was uh, it was well sealed up. When I first opened it, <laughs> I thought this was the filter material. Honestly, I, th I was thinking, oh my goodness, what is this? And there was a bit of packing. <laughs> So, then you get the filter and that comes with a spare filter pad, foam filter pad. As you can see, it's double-sided, fine and coarse. Then, you get this. Four cable ties. That apparently is a temperature sensor. And this, two plugs. This is the power flow, this is it. So the instructions for all this are on, the, he sends them to you as a link once you've ordered it on WhatsApp, which is very good. And they clear color photographs and the instructions are all in Spanish. Well, I'm no good at trying to translate online and bring that bring an iPad with me and do all that while I'm on the go. So I found it easier just to print it off, use Google Translate and write it all in English. The old fashioned way, I can work with that. And so all I'm gonna do now is work through these instructions one at a time and fit the power flow. First, we'll need to remove the seat. And then this side panel here, and I've already removed the screw here. And if you haven't seen my other video on how to cut the side panel here to make it easier to take off without needing to remove the rack, then uh, have a look at that. So that just now slides off and there you go, access to your battery compartment. As you can see, it's a bit mucky, so I'll have to clean all that up. Okay guys, sorry about this, slight boo-boo. I've been filming away and I didn't realise I'd set my camera by accident to slow-mo and uh, it's all wasted footage. So I've got to recap what I've done, which uh, is not what I intended, but anyway. First of all, take the battery off. Negative terminal, positive terminal. Take the battery bracket away. Take the battery out. This all comes away when you remove, that's the battery bracket there. This is the battery bracket and that all comes away. You take these bolts, which is a 10 millimeter socket. Okay. Next, it talks about removing this relay from here because it's in the way. Just pull it off. And there's another one here lower down, it doesn't mention. Okay, then it talks about removing the bolts which hold the air filter in place, which is one here. It's all very clear on the instructions and another one here there's also one on the top which I've taken off here and also I'll go around the other side you have to take this one off here which holds the reservoir for the rear brake cylinder because that's in the way now it talks about moving the air box across to the right, which is not an easy job. I also had fitted, um, I've got fitted a thunder box, which makes connectors. And this is the relay for my heated grips, which were all stuck down on here under tape, etc. And of course that's all attached to the air box. So I've had to take all this off to make it movable. Also, it isn't that easy to just shift across because remember it's got the air inlet 
bracket on the other side to the box and there's also this bracket here where you just can't just push it to the right but you can move it a bit look and also you have this pipe which is a breather for the air box and um, that has to come off get it disconnected which is a simple pair of pliers on the on the clip here and pull it off and now we've got this far it's talking about disconnecting this plug in there and this is so now I'm back where I was so I've got to disconnect this somehow and they say spray it with a WD-40 or similar leave it for a couple of minutes then get in there and there's a push on the connector pull it apart that looks a bit fiddly just go back a little bit because they're also talking about the, the screw for the regulator and well, there's my regulator and they're talking about removing a screw which holds it on and what I realized that's supposed to go there I believe is that my screw wasn't there so this has been rattling around and I'm glad of doing this job otherwise I wouldn't have known that so that's out of the way as well I've got to find a screw to fix that back in okay so this is the plug I've taken off it comes off of here which is just in front of the shock absorber there's just enough room it wasn't easy it was quite tight the WD-40 definitely helped you have to push on a little clip on the side and then also move it to the right took me with uh, one screwdriver pushing on the clip and one small flat blade to lever it to the right once it was moved a little bit it came off easily so it was a bit tricky but it's off so now the instructions get a little bit sexy they're talking about connecting the original female connector which is this one because as it says later in the instructions it does say the females have holes and the males have pins okay so i hope you're of a uh, suitable age to understand that um because there is the male in there some pins in it so this female obviously replaces this one and has to go connected to where that was and the male has to get connected to the original female so I've done that I actually it says now you connect the original female to the male which I did first actually and then it made it easier to connect the uh, others together and then we clamp the connector to the evacuation tube so that it does not get loose. Obviously we need to reconnect the evacuation tube and maybe put a cable tie on there to secure all the cables. So I've refitted the hose here and just secured the cable with the plugs together there to the hose to stop it rattling around. Next I'm going to find a way there to route the temperature sensor it says to locate the we recommend locating the temperature sensor on the front left side under the fairing of the motorcycle so that it collects ambient air so let's have a look see if i can find that okay so looking at that photograph what they're talking about is having it alongside the wiring harness under here and that means it's got to come up through where this all goes up where that goes through here and that means do you have to take all this side panel off and get in behind there or can I find a way of pulling it through which is what I'm going to try and do Remember they tell you to be very careful with all these components because they're sensitive. Okay, so that is a temperature sensor. It's not particularly robust looking. It's got to go up through there. I've attached it to a bit of wire, which is long enough, just to push it through under the um, fairing here and uh, see how we get on. Okay, so that worked. That was easy enough. Now I can take those apart and then cable tie that sensor where I need it, making sure it stays off hot past the engine, etc. So we're coming down from the left hand side front fairing 
Look inside there, and there's the silver bit there. That is the temperature sensor. It's cable tied here to the main loom. Now all I've got to do is tie it a bit further back again to avoid hot parts. So that's it, power flow fitted. All I've got to do now is reassemble the bike in reverse order. And that's what it says on the instructions. Okay, so the power flow is fitted. The next thing I'm going to do is do the uh, foam air filter. And this is a spare pad, the other pad's in here. So I'm going to separate that. And the best thing to do now is coat them with oil. You can see the different fine and coarse there. So I've chosen to go with a biodegradable oil because that makes that I can clean these filters at home. And they don't apparently all goes down with a down the kitchen sink with a proper biodegradable cleaner. So give it a good squirt. Both sides. Then instructions say. Put it in a plastic bag. And just gently massage it. And you leave it out for five minutes before you can use it. But with this one, I'm going to keep this as my spare. It's pre-oiled and stay in the bag. Now we can start taking the uh, original filter out. But before that, we give it a clean around. And then it's a case of removing the four screws. There's four there. Once the screws are out, you can remove the cover off the filter box. Have a further look inside. And you can see it is pretty dusty in here. Oh, well, give it as much of a clean as possible before I actually take the filter out. Reduce the chances of dust going in. It'd be interesting to see just how good that filter's been. Unclip it, pull it out. That's the inside, and you can see it's not too bad actually, considering this rides in a lot of dust. People have said on some of their bikes they've had problems with their filters, and have a look inside with the lamp. Yeah, there is actually dust inside there, which is where obviously that feeds into the engine, so it is letting very, very fine dust get inside there. Clean that as much as possible. Okay, this is the original filter and it has this metal grid on it. And you need this part to fit on the new filter. So to get it off, you get a pair of snips, clip, snip, 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 pull it away. And you can put that aside for now. And this needs to go on here on the outside with a mesh, wire mesh on the inside, like that. And all the nuts and bolts are provided with the new filter. Now to fit this, you need a very small cross point screwdriver. And this is actually the one out of the original Voge toolkit. It just fits nicely. And for the nuts, you need a 5.5 millimeter socket. Unusual size, but they are very small. Okay, once all the uh, nuts and bolts are tight, the grid's on there. It does say put the nuts on the inside. There's this small grid which goes in there. On top of that you put your filter, which is pre-oiled. Um, right, so the foam filter is double density and the denser side 
goes inside. So the black on the outside there, the coarse foam, just tucked in neatly, and then put the cover on the outer grid. Just clip it on. Another thing you need from the original filter is this rubber gasket here, which is, you need to be take care pulling it off so you don't tear it off. Just squirted a little bit of WD-40 around there just to help peel it away. I think they'll be able to supply one, a new one with a new filter. That would have been nice, but anyway, this is fine. And then you position it on the new filter. And that's the filter ready to go. So now we fit that in the same place as the original filter. Where else would it go? I find I just tried it earlier, and because this grid has been moved into a new filter and it's not quite lined up exactly as the other one, you need to juggle it a bit to get it in. Make sure that outer grid stays on, and that's in. Okay, there's one other thing in the instructions I tell you to do now before you put the cover on. Apparently these projections here interfere with the new filter box because they are a big, it is a bigger um, size. And so it says to cut them off, and it looks like you cut them off flush there. And you use a pair of snips to do that. So that'll be next. So that's that done. Just a pair of snips, clip around, take them down. Well, job done. The airbox cover went on easy enough. I have to clip those uh, projections off. Side panels back on, seats back on, power flows fitted. Only one thing left to do. And the big question you're all asking is, does it make any difference? And it'll be interesting to see just how good that new air filter actually is compared to the original. I'll give you some feedback later when I've been for a ride. So this is me, literally just about to press the starter for the first time since fitting the power flow. Well, it starts. Now, I've got no measuring equipment or nothing. This is about me seeing how I feel, whether it feels it makes a difference. And by all the claims, I've had this bike now for a couple of years, 17,000 kilometers. Honestly, honestly, initially I thought, well, I can't feel a difference, but now it's warmed up a bit. Honestly, it's that initial... The response is quicker, definitely. Like the initial pickup, it just feels... Sharper. Definitely. Oh. oh, definitely. Yep, definitely. There's a little bit more to it now. Oh, yes. She's warming up. Yeah.
feel it there now, just there on the just touch the she's there. Like Hey, hey. Well, combined effort of power flow and the airflow filter, I'm saying so far there's definitely a noticeable difference. I have a much more, a much more responsive engine at the initial pickup there. Definitely, when they say it feels like it breathes more easily, that is exactly what it feels like. It's 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 breathing. Just made the whole thing a bit more exciting. <laughs> that was an exciting ride. I'm, I, I'm amazed, actually. I'd heard this thing was good, but I didn't know it'd be this good. I was a bit surprised. I'm really surprised. Um, Oh, I love this bike anyway, but this has now added a, like a new dimension. It's like a new bike. No, the bike has got a, it's just got that more kick to it. And it just seems to go easier. And you may have heard by my insane <laughs> laughter. I was having fun. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the beginning. Where's this thing power flow? How did I find out about it? On Facebook, on the forum, um, you they have European Facebook, Vogue 300 Rally Forum. Somebody fitted one and it showed a little uh, round box with an orange light on it, said on it, Vogue 300 Rally, you know, power flow. And I thought, well, that must be it. That's the device then, this little round box with a light on. Anyway, I kept seeing more, I gave it time, more and more posts, then somebody else fitted one and uh, they come up with a link. And the link, I thought, well, I'm going to get one, and I went to JR Endurance. JR Endurance. Now, so, with this thing, this vision of this round box with a little orange light on, in my mind, thinking that is the power flow. Everything I ordered through JR Endurance, I tell the whole the whole thing I've dealt the whole dealing with JR Endurance. It's a guy called Ruben, Ruben. It's all Spanish, and uh, all uh, you do it on WhatsApp, and uh, I use Google Translate, no problem. Very responsive, very prompt. The thing took just a week to get to me, um, and when it didn't arrive, I after a couple of days I checked and he checked with a delivery company had tried to deliver it taking it to the post office but they didn't tell me it's not it's not, it's not JR Endurance fault I'm going to call him JR from now on so it's not JR's fault anyway so it turned up and I'll, as you've seen in the the video what was in it I was surprised not to find a little round box with an orange light on saying power flow for Vogue 300 rally so I sent a message back to JR and he said, no, that is the power flow there. It, it doesn't need the, the little red, the, the round box. He said, all that is is a switch and a, re a light. So you can turn it on and off. And I thought, oh, so I looked online and I found this other company called JC Endurance. Now, if you go to their website, it explains all the history. It started off as JR and then it, then they two guys split up and then there's JC and Endurance and JR Endurance, so there's JC and JR. Now, according to the JC's website, and it's all on there, I'm not trying to cause trouble here, there's not, I'm not telling you anything that isn't for public information. It says that the thing that I was sent without the little box on, the little 
round box doesn't work for a uh, Euro 5 bike and uh, this petite being a Euro 5 bike it says it's not suitable you have to buy the one with the switch on in the little round box and I thought well what? hang on I've just been sent something and according to JC that won't work but according to JR it does so I check with JR and he says yes it does work <laughs> so sorry guys uh, you know you two better sort yourselves out but I thought, well, I bought this thing. I've been assured by the supplier, JR, that it works. And he says he's changed it so you reposition the temperature sensor to the front, as you've seen in the video, inside the fairing, and that it works. So, you know, there was this, oh, well, it won't it, will it won't it. And so I had to trust, and I've gone and fitted it, and I've tested it, and at the moment, it's working. Now, over time, I'll be able to tell, you know, if it says it's not suitable, will I get fault lights? I don't know. But at the moment, I can say <laughs> it, it's working. And I think the two together helps, the air filter and the power flow, definitely. And you know, those two things together are 40 euros each plus eight euros delivery. For 88 euros, I've got an engine that is burning more efficiently and cooler, and I get more power, and I don't need to buy any more air filters. I mean, that's just win, 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 isn't it? So time will tell. But at the moment, thumbs up. Thank you to JR. And thank you guys for following and subscribing and liking and commenting and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, if you've got uh, power flows fitted, feel free to comment. But I really don't want to go down the line of saying, no, that shouldn't be there, and that's all right. No, they're better than that, and that's better than that. Please, please, none of that. Just, you know, let's accept. I've fitted it, and it's working. So, live long, ride on.